made a lot of tincture, made about two or three litres of it. And it's been sitting on the shelf waiting for the right moment. And the right moment arrived about six weeks ago. And I had a, a patient who uh, didn't have continual diarrhoea, but just had uh, a sense of urgency, uh, when she didn't really need it. Uh, and I remembered this tincture, so I got it out and I made a mixture, because I tend to use maybe... I start thinking I'll use six, and I usually use about 12 herbs in a mixture. Um, and this was the main herb, and it, it's remarkable. It just has that gentle toning effect on the bowel. Just fantastic. So it's not massively astringent, it's not binding you up like Imodium, it's just a tonic effect. So, because the idea with herbs is that you don't take them forever. You know, they're like, this is the herb, you know, we found it, this is the one for you, this is a lifetime supply. It's more a case of, if we tone and help your body heal, then you won't need them anymore. So, um, at the moment, it's doing exactly what we want. And in fact, about a week after she came to see me, somebody else came. And I thought, this herb again. How lucky I have three litres on the shelf. <laughs> um, and again, it's, you know, I saw this uh, second person uh, a couple of weeks later, which is what I do. See, the first, first consultation takes an hour to an hour and a half. The second one, two weeks later, takes about half an hour to an hour, depending on how much social chit chat we engage in. Um, so after two weeks, um, I, I could leave this out of her mixture because that, she, that was no longer a problem. That was so much no longer a problem. There are other things we needed to do. So a uh, really useful herb and easy to overlook because there's so much of it about. Was, so that, even, was that the garlic one? No, 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 no it, isn't. it just no, looks herb like it. Bennett. Her, her Bennett. Bennett. Her Bennett. Oh, right. Boil a little sugar in them. Make them to a tea if you don't want to. And they make a really nice green juice. The thing about dandelion leaves is that they are a diuretic and they're very bitter. So I wouldn't put too many in any juice that you make. This is birch. This time of year, just from the big income trees, this is when you... Oh, <laughs> me and the dog. Anyway, <laughs> this is the herbalist. <laughs> I'm the mouthpiece. Um, <laughs> you drill a hole in the tree. You have a word with it first. You say, how do you feel about this tree? And the tree says, whatever. Uh, and you make a groove and you tie a, a pot underneath it and the sap will, will drip into the container and then you can make wine. It's quite nice. Mm. So you can make wine out of dandelion heads. Uh, the birch tincture is often made from the leaves or it can be made from the sap. Uh, it's a powerful diuretic. The thing about dandelion leaf diuretic is it contains potassium, which you lose if you take a diuretic. This doesn't contain potassium, so you have to make sure there is potassium uh, in your diet if you're taking a supplement. But it works very well, particularly if you've got quite swollen joints, you know, with arthritis and things, it can be very helpful. But the important thing is not to take too much because it's quite drying. So uh, it's in moderation, but I do use it occasionally with different patients, people for whom they, can, they hold a lot of fluid. It's a really good way of helping them release it. Yes, but I, I don't think you're going to be taking enough of it okay. to have the effect. I mean, there's the sort of side effects yeah, I'm you're taking quite a high dose. Uh -huh. So if you're having birch syrup sugar, sounds good, doesn't it? So what you do is you gather the sap in the way I've described and then boil it until it becomes like a syrup. Probably. There's no Question calories mark. in it, and people have diabetes, can you use this as a sweet? Right, excellent. Okay, yeah. didn't know about that. Yeah. There we go, use. Mm. Um, I think it does. I don't know where the garlic smell. It's, uh, it doesn't have a bowl for this particular garlic, and it's very good to it. You can add it to um, stir fries and to omelettes and to all sorts of food, but don't use too much of it. It contains quite a lot of oxalic acid. So which can cause, if you have a tendency towards kidney stones, it can aggravate it, or even joint pains, or even gout. So it's good, but just moderation again. But then it is garlic, so probably moderation is the way you'd approach it. Um, standard garlic, Mediterranean garlic, with the bulbs, is, uh, was used in, the, in World War I in the way that we now use antibiotics. And uh, having read that piece of information, I went on holiday with a friend to uh, Ladakh, she got a, a tropical ulcer and I thought, let's pack it with garlic. Apparently it hurts if you do that. So uh, I haven't tried it since. <laughs> we are still friends. Um, 
but it is very antibacterial, so it does it's, it does prevent infection. Um, what it's so it's good for, and because it's very smelly, it contains allicin, which is the smelly element. It diffuses through tissue. So if you've got a small child and you've nothing better to do, you can rub its feet with cut garlic, and very quickly its breath will smell of garlic, which can provide entertainment for hours. <laughs> 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 You know, if there's nothing on television. <laughs> if they have yes. a chest infection or something similar, that's actually quite useful for them as well as entertaining for you. Um, so it's antibacterial, antiviral, uh, antifungal, uh, anti it's against parasites, garlic. Anti-fly. Anti-fly. If you want to smell like garlic, the flies hate you. Friends may be a little bit doubtful. Uh, but yeah, absolutely good, good point. It's also a blood cleanser, blood thinner, lowers cholesterol. Uh, powerful antioxidant, um, useful preservative. It's um, woodpecker. <laughs> Getting close. Um, and so it's good all-round herb. So this is, and you'll find sheep and cows and all. I mean, the dogs won't eat it because they eat grass. Um, but other animals will graze on this at this time of year as a sort of wormer and a blood cleanser. Another one of those blood cleansers. Oh. Oh yes, yeah. it's no, no, no. it's this yes. one. Um, this is uh, a, another one of those blood cleansers that I was talking about. Goes into Easter ledge pudding. I haven't seen any Easter ledges yet, but never mind. Um, it's so it's full of vitamin C. It's particularly good for um, draining the lymph system. So you know, if you've had a cold or flu and your glands are still up, a tea after this is very good. Um, also good for breast cysts, helps drain the lymph glands around, around the arm, the armpit area. Um, and it's, it's a, just a general all-round tonic. It's good for your immune system, it builds you up. Because the lymph system is your, part of your immune system. It's, it's the bus lane for your white blood cells, and lets them get where they need to go very, very quickly. So it helps cleanse, and uh, it's a bit of a diuretic as well. It's something I use a lot of, and what I particularly like about it is that when I make a tincture out of it, it's uh, good for you. I like that a lot. A lot of my tinctures mm. are brown. Um, and you can put it in salads, but it does have tiny hairs, which is why it sticks to things. So you've got to be careful and catch the back of your throat and but you choke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tea. Tea. So you can put it in salads and things, but you just don't want to get those hairs no. caught. So uh, I would make a tea of it. But it's nice and refreshing, nice and light, and it's good. Good for you. Goosegrass, sweetheart, cleavers, gallium aparini.